Hey, what's up, guys? We got Foster here, leaning up against the old, against the old Dakota Sport. We got the Miss Lovey Dovey. All right. So, uh, my helper today has decided to uh, help me track down the, the brake line issue that we're having with the Dakota. I'm gonna look at the lines closest to the front of the vehicle since I found a small puddle of brake fluid down there earlier. That guy right down in there. Hit him. Right there spewing everywhere so to get to the mounting points for that line the battery's got to come out the battery tray's got to come out and the sidewall for the wheel well needs to come out and the tire and wheel need to come off i'm also going to go ahead and do a quick inspection of the other lines to see what else that i'm going to replace right now the idea is to make sure it can stop on its own power so that i don't uh, run into anything when I bring it into the shop. So without further ado guys I'm gonna go ahead and put you guys on another time-lapse and uh, we're gonna try to get to that line And then we can get to the store. We'll buy Whatever line we need and I'll bend it to fit and hopefully we'll have a truck that we can bleed and stop So stay tuned All right, guys, so this thing, uh, it kind of has a uh, stage fright. I don't know what's going on every time I try to pull a bolt. doesn't want to go, and then when I cut the camera off, then I start finally getting bolts out of there. But uh, this is the leaky boy that was bad, and what I ended up doing was undoing this 13-millimeter uh, this bolt and just pulling it through the wheel well like that. Uh, this is actually the brake line that goes directly to the caliper. So... This line is the one that was bad. You can see that it is severely rotted all the way up this guy. So, and that was kind of a pain in the butt to take off. Like everything around here was rotted on so badly that it was just really difficult to take off. So all this stuff was really, really, so you, you can tell that one's gonna be a pain in the butt to take off as well. So yeah, so the, uh, the only thing I can think of to do is uh, bolt it to somewhere else that had a 13 millimeter and then put a wrench on it and crank on it and if it breaks off or something like that I don't know or maybe uh, cut the line here cut the line just just cut the line itself since it's bad anyway and then put an impact on it uh, bolt it down and then throw an impact on there maybe that'll get it out of there a little bit better We'll try that. So I got that bad boy snipped off right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bolt this on the these holes, something that makes it easy to get to. All right guys, so after some bumbling and fumbling, geez, I don't know what's going on with me today. But anyway, it's bad, but we're gonna go ahead and just kind of stick this in a spot for right now. All right, we're gonna try to shoot this thing off. This thing here. Makes it easy. So now, we got to get to, it's a pain now, is this one right here. I think at this point what I can do is I can just stick a ratchet on this one and go ahead and get rid of it. And then uh, I can probably just leave this line alone, even though I really feel like I should change it. We're going to see. We're just going to get this, this son of a gun, this piece of crap out of here first. All I got is my Milwaukee on me, so let's see what we can do. And it's stripped, of course. Of course it's stripped. So uh, I gotta go get my Irwins, and we're gonna try to get this thing out of here. Try to remove these two lines and get this whole bracket out of there, and then work with it on the bench. All right, guys, as you can see, I got this dripping silly mess here, and I finally got the distribution block out. So I can put it in a vise and I can go ahead and work these parts out of it because they are seized in there. Uh, but with the lines being broken and rusted shut and everything else, it just made it that much more difficult. So I'm going to finish taking that, that little line right there. This guy, taking that line out. Most of my problem with this thing is tons 
and tons and tons of rusty bolts and just rust. But uh, what's worse than that is that most of those brake lines go into the back. Some of them looked okay. Some of them looked like they were replaced. And then, but it looked like they were spliced in to old uh, uh, lines as well. So a lot of them were really, really rusty. And then there were some good ones. And then, you know, it was just all cut up and beat down. And you know what? At some point, you just gotta, you, you, you just gotta start fresh. And I think this is the time to start fresh. So I am gonna order a complete set of brake lines. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just, just replace brake lines. Like, just like a crazy man. Just go under there and replace them. And I'll probably have to do it outside because I don't know how long, uh, I don't know, I don't know how long I'm gonna have things in the shop. This might be just something I have to work on out here for right now. And on good weather days, stuff like that. So, all right guys. So it's a week later, it's a week down the line right now. And uh, you know what we got today? That's right. Well, I've been doing some independent work on some other people's cars today, just trying to get some money up during this whole COVID thing. But this guy came in the mail, inline tube. You know what that is? You know what those are, guys? That's right, those are brake lines for the Dakota. The brake lines are finally here. I also have something else to show you. Bam. These are the brake lights for the trailer. Those came in the mail. We're gonna turn our attention to the Dakota right here. And today with the Dakota, we're gonna go ahead and uh, finish up this whole brake situation here. I'm gonna have to get under here and uh, finish what we're doing. I'm gonna go ahead and put you on the GoPro for that because it's a lot easier to deal with the GoPro than it is with this camera. I'm gonna need to buy another camera, man, bad. So anyway, guys, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start putting the brake lines in the Dakota and then uh, we'll see how far we get. So you guys are going on GoPro. I probably won't time lapse too much of it, but you know, I'm gonna have it with me. So in case I run into something, in case I see something, in case I see something, I can go ahead and inform you guys. So you guys stay tuned, sit tight. All right guys, so here's my little setup. I brought the little, the little travel toolbox out with me, which is pretty cool. All right, so I got the front wheels up and off and I started taking off uh, the front brake line. So this is the one that travels from the distribution box over to the passenger side. And as you can see, as I took it off, that guy just broke right off. I ended up, I'm sorry I didn't put it on camera, but I ended up putting the new line in. You can see that nice shiny line right here. And uh, that bad boy's in. I just gotta go ahead and finish tightening it up. And what I've been doing is as I take a line out, I compare it to one of the new lines in the box, like this guy here. Like I know these, this one is for the uh, rear, just by the way they look. I've seen the rear ones. These are pretty much for the rear that go over the pumpkin. And this, these are for some of the lines from the distribution box or the, uh, the proportioning valve. I know somebody's gonna say something about what I called it. But uh, this is the one long line that travels all the way from the front to the back brakes. Yeah, as I've been kind of pulling them out, I've been kind of just comparing them, making sure I have the right lines. I got to this line from the top. I just took the air box out that was right here. And then I was able to get to that line right there really easy. Google, uh, I Googled this company that made these lines and uh, there was some bad reviews about how they didn't fit. They got the wrong part, it took too long. And honestly, so far, um, it looks like all of my lines match up and it's not very difficult to put them in. You do have to do some bending yourself, but for the most part, it's pretty close. Um, the only issue I did have with this company is that when I ordered the part, the item number had a few digits that were mixed up. So their computer didn't recognize it as one of their parts and so they never sent it to me. They never shipped it. The two days after it's supposed to get here, I, made it, I figured it may be a COVID thing or something. But two days after that, I called them and found out and tried to figure out why it wouldn't show up. And they told me that they couldn't find the part number, they couldn't find it. So they immediately refunded the money directly there. And then they reordered the part for me over the phone and it got here. They said it would be here Friday. It's here Wednesday. I can't complain. So I'm just gonna keep moving with this. See you in a little bit. All right guys, so to give you a little example of the bins on this thing. So as you can see the bins on this old one and the new one, if you compare them, the bins are so identical. Now you see this piece is missing. That's where it looped around but they are really identical. They did not do a bad job with 
getting the bins right. I'm gonna give a big shout out to Inline Tube, man. They're doing a, they did a pretty good job lining these up. Everything looks good so far. I'm not mad about it. The only difficulties is because the lines are so rusted and the stuff is so rusted, is that um, you know, it's difficult to get them out. But as far as lining them up and making sure you got the right stuff, all you gotta do is just line it up. So I just gotta run everything to the proportioning valve, and we're good to go. We keep moving. See you in a bit. I just want to give one more shout out to inline tubing because they even have the right bins for everything that goes on the master cylinder all right guys i know what you're gonna say but i couldn't help myself so what i did was i ended up taking the whole master cylinder off so far i figured i'm already taking the lines out i already have to bench bleed it i might as well clean it up and go ahead and shoot a little black on that shouldn't take long at all but I'm going to continue because those little lines right here are for those lines right there. And I can go ahead and swap those out real quick right now. So I'm going to do that. Alright guys, so I'm kind of losing some daylight here. It's getting a little dark. But uh, I'll tell you what, I got that whole front end done. You can see everything in there. All the brake lines uh, actually run where they need to go. There may be some small adjustments, some small bending and stuff that needs to be done. Like I might have to move some of these over. But that's because they are going to where they need to go. And I haven't attached them yet. But so far so good. Man. I'm actually really happy with how these things are coming out. You can see that guy down in there turns out good you can see all these guys here going to the proportioning valve see I said it right that time proportioning valve and then I couldn't help myself like I said I ended up taking the master cylinder off and uh, it looked like it was in pretty good shape it looked like it was fairly new like it was replaced before the brake lines like they didn't know what happened so they just started replacing things so it looks fairly new this has got a little bit of rust and crust down here uh, possibly from some leakage or something but other than that everything else in there actually looks pretty good so I'll probably take this guy off at some point when I'm getting ready to put everything back together and clean this up and paint it because it's got a little rust spots here so I'll probably you know hit it with some rust reformer and then paint it with a little rust-oleum hey what's up guys it's another lovely day at the shop and what we're doing today is I'm going to try to finish up putting the brake lines in on the uh, Dakota and uh, I was looking underneath and I'll tell you what look at this thing this is the exhaust and it looks almost brand new looking all under here everything looks so clean there's a tiny bit of surface rust on this frame but that is absolutely nothing but yeah this is where I need to get to I need to get these brake lines out so here's the brake lines I need to get to it's not a big deal actually these look like they're in pretty good shape and I probably can get away with not doing them just do the long one but I'm gonna go ahead and do them since I'm right here but we'll see what happens I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these bad boys out I'm not gonna time lapse it I'm just gonna start pulling these just a couple of bolts here and here and I'm gonna pull the long one out from the from the from the other side and uh, that's what we're gonna do today see if we can't get all these lines put back together so let's see what happens hey what's up guys it is another day at the shop Basically, uh, I finished putting all of the brake lines in. All the brake lines are done. I went and tested them for, uh, for leaks and everything. Uh, two of the lines I had to make myself because the first line, the longest line that goes from the front all the way to the back, that line that came from the company was about a foot too short. 
So I had to go to the store and I grabbed another line, but unfortunately that line leaked. So what I ended up doing is I had to make my own brake line, which I, had to use, I gave myself a crash course in making brake lines, and I actually had to make one to actually make the extension. And I'm sorry, but I didn't get to record any of that. I was just trying to get everything running and set up and ready to go. As you can see, everything in the engine bay is back together. And there's all the new brake lines. They're all in there. They're good, they're solid. There's that junction box that I was having so much trouble with before, but it's all in there, nothing's leaking there. It's good. Down in there, that, that line for the back is 100% new. So all these lines have been replaced. My dad, like I said, my dad came by and he helped me uh, bleed them. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this thing for a little test drive. Heck yeah, this thing starts right up. No lights on the dash whatsoever. How cool is that? So moving forward, and she stops well. Now there's probably gonna be some creaks and stuff on this thing because the fact of the matter is, is that it hasn't been moved in a while, like a long time. The guy said it sat for two years, first of all. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and just give it a quick maiden voyage make sure everything's good and so far the brakes seem to be working great I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to rebuild the the pads I'll probably get pads and uh, I'll probably get pads and rotors for it as well but just to take you guys down the street on this thing the fact of the matter is if I hit the brakes she stops if I hit the gas, she goes. And if I turn the steering wheel, she turns, which is all you can really ask for right now. I'm hearing a grumble, but I think that's a wheel bearing. So there you have it, guys. The car runs, it drives, it steers, it stops, it does everything it's supposed to do for right now. Maybe a couple of little noises here and there, just a few little things that need to be tweaked. Fix the window, fix the bumper. And uh, yeah, we got ourselves a nice little truck here. Either I don't know if I'm either gonna sell it or if I'm gonna keep it as a parts runner. I have no idea right now. But uh, I just wanna thank you guys for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And if you like what I'm doing, like, subscribe, comment, you know, do all that good stuff. And uh, in the end, you guys keep wrenching. Wrench, wrench out. Peace.